Oh, why does my leg hurt? Ow! Don't ever get old. Hey everybody, welcome back to my floor. I have rearranged things around here mostly because I'm getting cabin fever and I need something to do and I don't really want to craft. I'm actually going to show you how I put together and made my Zori cosplay. So without further ado, let's get on to that. I figured I would start out with the neck armor, the... I guess, yeah, you would call this like neck armor. So this is actually just made out of EVA foam. This is eight millimeter, I believe. And I actually took some wrapping paper, cut a hole in the middle of it, and then put it on top of my mannequin and kind of just shaped it. It kind of looked like flat and that served as my template for actually making this out of foam. And once I had that basic shape, I then put it back on my mannequin and started to draw all of these little you know, groove areas in Sharpie. I took a piece of, I guess you could call this tracing paper. I put it over top of the piece of foam and basically traced all of the areas that I had drawn out. So whenever I had the finished piece, I had all these little pieces here that I ended up puzzling onto the top of the eight millimeter foam, if that makes sense. I made sure to dremel down all of the edges so everything looked pretty smooth and flush. And then I just went and glued everything on with contact cement. And then to wear it, I just put a piece of Velcro right here. And then there's some strips right here and it just kind of goes like that. And then on the front, so this isn't like flopping all over the place, I have a piece of Velcro here as well, and this um, sticks to the Velcro that I have on the top piece. I think I used a heat gun to kind of shape it a little bit more, so I went underneath the shoulder pieces and hit it with my heat gun, kind of formed it over my mannequin, or you can even do it on yourself, just be careful, and kind of held it there till it cooled down, and now it has this nice curvy shape. Yeah, that's all that there was for the neck slash shoulder piece. Next I'll go over how I made the gauntlet. These are pretty simple to make and all I did really was took some um, cling wrap and duct tape and wrapped it around my arm. Once that was done, I had this piece flat on the table and when I had the piece flat on the table, I drew in in Sharpie these these marks here and around the cuff as well and then there's some on the back too. I went over those lines with my soldering iron. This piece right here is actually a piece of two millimeter foam that I went over top just to make it a little bit higher up. You don't have to do that to be honest with you. I did this because the piece under here is really crappy looking and I had to cover it up. I also kind of went in with like a soldering iron and uh, gave it a lot of battle damage. I know in the movie Zori doesn't really have a lot of battle damage on her armor but I thought in photo shoots it would read a lot better to have these pieces weathered and in my opinion I think it looks better weathered. I like things that are weathered so you can choose to make these whatever you want. And next up, I worked on the bicep piece. Um, same kind of deal with the gauntlets. I just took some cling wrap and some duct tape, wrapped it around my bicep, and this was essentially just a strip of foam. The same thing, took a Sharpie and, you know, drew in all of the marks that I needed to, went over it with a soldering iron. And then to close it and make it a circle, I used some contact cement to glue it together. And there actually is a piece of Velcro in here whenever I was intending to have these stick onto my sleeves with Velcro. Like the little um, details on her sleeves actually hold these up. So I ended up not putting Velcro on the sleeves. The next thing are these, I don't know what you would call these, like arm bicep bracelets? I don't know. These were essentially just long strips that I had and I can kind of show you this is, this is the belt piece. But they were essentially just long strips that I had and then I in turn just close them up. Before I glued them together, I went in and drew in all of the rune pieces. I guess these are runes. I don't know. Please don't kill me. I essentially just followed what I could from the reference photos. The nice thing is that these repeat. And I just kind of drew these in and then went over them with my heat tool. And that's all that there was for these ones. And honestly, these were pretty fun to do. I really enjoyed uh, drawing all the little rune symbols on them. I just showed this briefly, but this is the belt piece that kind of goes underneath her Boost. Again, I feel like a broken record, but I just took some duct tape, put it on myself, and kind of got the general length that I needed, and put transferred that duct tape onto some brown craft paper, got a template, and then I transferred this to some 6 millimeter foam. It closes in the back with just a bit of Velcro like this, but it did start to slip throughout the day, and so I would kind of recommend putting a little bit of Velcro on the front and some Velcro on your shirt, just so you have a little extra peace of mind. And then the last bit of foam armor that I have is the belt. Again, I think I actually patterned this on my mannequin, but you can do it on your body as well. Just covered it in some cling wrap, duct tape, made a pattern, and I ended up with this. The same kind of dealio with the pattern here. 
just all of this originally was sharpie and then i just went over it with a soldering iron and again it closes here with some velcro I had a belt loop i don't know where it is i might have lost it i might have to remake it but the belt loop it covers this little spot here or it's supposed to there's a lot of photos where i didn't have it there and oops bad cosplayer you could be smart and actually put it like in the back so no one would see it belt buckle was just you know cut out of six millimeter foam i glued it right to the piece yeah i glued it right to the piece color is to it it's pretty pretty nice belt Oh, and the last thing that I want to talk about with all of the armor pieces is obviously you can tell that they're not super clean, they're super weathered, and that was a choice that I decided to make. Like I said earlier, her armor in the movie is pretty clean. In my opinion, this type of armor photographs a lot better whenever it's weathered. If this wasn't weathered, I don't think you'd be able to see this really well in photos. But what I did was I took some black acrylic paint and I also took a cup of water. I put my paintbrush in the black paint and then put it in the water and kind of go back and forth. And then I would paint some layers on to this, let it sit for and then wipe it away. Then you would kind of get this look here where it's kind of sitting in the crevices like that. That's all that there was to the weathering. Um, I, again, had a lot of fun. But I do have to warn you, you will get your hands covered in black paint and it's okay, it'll wash off. Next I'll show you the holster. <laughs> My friend Del, she was in town whenever I was working on this and she actually templated out the holster for me. She's really good at doing a lot of leather work and she, she offered to template it for me so I was like, heck yeah, go have fun. Thank God she did because I don't think I ever would have made the holster. If I'm remembering correctly, she took some duct tape or painter's tape and actually kind of draped it on me. That kind of as a guide, she then cut that out of two millimeter EVA foam and she did the same thing with the holster sides as well. And then after she templated that out for me, I essentially just had to cut it out of leather. The only reason I used actual leather is because I had this on hand and I really just wanted to use it up to get it out of my stash because I don't want to be using real leather anymore. It's one is expensive and two I just don't really I feel kind of weird about it. You could totally make this holster out of foam. I would probably recommend using eight millimeter EVA foam if you're going to do that maybe six millimeter. The holster sits like this on my body and I have it closing on the sides with two pieces of Velcro. And I did that because one, I didn't have any snaps available and two, it sits a little bit um, closer to my body. So on the front of the holster where you see it kind of crisscrossing, that's actually glued together so it's not going to lose its shape. I use leather glue. It kind of works the same way as contact cement where you slather some leather glue on one side of the leather and on the piece that's going to connect it. I slathered glue on both sides, pushed it where I wanted it to be, and then just use some clamps and let it sit overnight. And the same thing, is going on on the back as well so whenever I put the holster it's sticking to me whenever I put the holster on it looks like this now the actual holster bits are glued to the back as well that way it sits how I want it to I believe I have some footage of whenever these holsters were flat essentially they were folded out this way and I took the leather folded it in on itself and then I used some leather glue here as well to kind of fuse it together now for the pieces that go on the leg these pieces are actually riveted in. And that's so whenever I'm walking, they kind of swing naturally. I really would recommend using rivets for at least this part because it, there's gonna be a lot of friction going on here and rivets are a lot longer lasting for leather work in that way. And then these pieces just Velcro around my leg. Again, you could use snaps. I didn't have any snaps at the time, so I used Velcro. The second to last part that I had to do on this was I had to draw in all of these runes and this was a pain in the butt to do, I'm not gonna lie. I used my soldering iron again like I did for the foam pieces. So I initially went in and drew in the long lines that go on everything. Then I went back in and I drew in all of the lines like the top down lines to make all the boxes. Then I went back in and drew in all of the runes. It felt a lot easier to do that in batches. And after like a bajillion years, it was finally done. I went over everything with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and deglazer just to get the last remnants of oil out of here. This bronze leather paint laying around and it was just absolutely perfect. And I used, I think it was only one layer of leather paint on this and that was it. And then excuse me I farted and then the guns obviously um, these I actually 3d printed these are these were modeled by the same guy who modeled the helmet um, puzzle box props I was really fortunate that whenever he modeled this it was like the next week he had these come out and I was like oh thank god because um, again I was trying to get this cosplay done in like a month and there was just no way I was going to be able to foam smith these and a helmet in a month 
for Katsukon, which turned out to be the only convention that I got to go to this year. Yay! I just painted these up with some black acrylic paint, used the same gold that I used on the armor. So the next bit are the gloves. The gloves are pretty simple. These are actually gloves from Amazon that I cut. You can see I didn't even hem the edges because they're going to be under gauntlets. Who cares? And I just painted them with a mixture of two Angelus leather paints. One of my favorite parts of the costume is actually the boot covers that are not boot covers. They're actually just boot cuffs. So again, my friend Dowell templated out this pattern for me. I have this pair, these pair of Fry boots that I got off like Poshmark or something, and they're super comfortable. And I really, really, really wanted to use these for Zori because if you look at Zori's shoes, they're weird. They're very weird looking. I have large feet. I don't want my feet to look like that, so I'm just gonna use some boots that I know work. They're not they're not screen accurate, but you know what? Those shoes are ugly and I'm not wearing those. This is what they look like unfolded. They look like this and again I have velcro here I didn't need velcro and then I fold them over on themselves and they look like a little cuff so all I have to do whenever I'm wearing them is just let that little piece slot into it and I've got cuffed boots I honestly wasn't going to do this until she started patterning out the cuffs and I was like all right I guess I will <laughs> can you tell that I basically just do parts of costly if I like feel like it I feel like that's how it should be. <laughs> and then the last thing that I didn't really talk about are the pants. I made her suit two pieces. The pants situation is kind of like an overall type deal. I patterned out the pants with a pattern that I have and I then created a little tube. It's essentially a tube top that I attached to the pants and then there are some elastic, elastic bands and those Velcro in the front staying up making sure I'm not showing any butt crack to anyone that, you know, shouldn't be looking at my butt crack. It just kind of keeps it all in one cohesive piece. Put some Velcro on the overalls, and there's also some Velcro on the bottom of the top, and that is so that they kind of, you know, they Velcro together, and then there's less of a chance that the shirt rides up. Well, I uh, cut the shirt a little bit too short. You can sometimes see that Velcro in pictures, and that's 100% my fault. Just make sure that the top is a lot longer, and don't be like me. Oh, there is one more thing I want to show you. So, in my first video where I was showing you how I made my helmet, there was a part where I snapped off this antenna. I just broke the antenna off of this again. And when that happened, that was honestly the third or fourth time that it happened. And I was like, this is not going to work for KatsuCon. I'm going to break it when I put it in my car. So my husband, he actually came up with the idea to make it magnetic. I dremeled in a little hole into the back of the helmet where the antenna is going to sit and it needs to be inside of the helmet because it needs to be a little bit flush and then I just glued in some rare earth magnets and took my soldering iron, did the same thing to the bottom, glued the magnets in and I forget which way it goes. Look at that! If you have something really fragile on your helmet and you're prone to breaking it, use a magnet because that's way better than it snapping in half. Really hope that this video helped you out in some way. If you have any other questions or comments, suggestions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I will probably be back next week with something a little bit different. I'm just gonna say it's related to the Clone Wars and it may be someone whose name rhymes with Schmobadan. Yeah, I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you guys next time. And don't forget, the time to craft is now.